Hello everyone, one last follow-up on the multiple regression forecasting. Um, so let's go back to Excel where we finished before. Um, we had just finished it, the multiple regression, gotten this equation with all the coefficients. Now we needed to uh, forecast for the quarters. Um, so one little tricky thing when I was doing that formula, there was one small mistake when I was doing the forecasts. And what you want to do is... Uh, Sorry, we're in part two. Uh, on these forecasts, notice originally I was doing, okay, t times, which is this, uh, so I've got the intercept, this h21 number, plus h22, this number that we copied over, times uh, t, and then 0.21875 times q2, q1, and then so on and so forth. But the thing is, when you fill this down, since I've copied these numbers here and not manually entered into the formula, it will move as well. So to tell them not to move when you fill down on these cells and to keep them in the same place in the formula, you need to add dollar signs around each one of the H's, H21, H22. So I've got dollars around the H, dollar signs around the H, dollar signs around the H. And when that, what that does is notice, because each time the D cells are going to move, D2 will become D3, E2 will become E3, F2 will become F3, and so forth. But if you notice when I go down, the H numbers are not going to move because I've added these dollar signs. So you're going to need to do that to update the forecast. And then everything else is the same. So the forecast error will be the data value minus the forecast. The square of the forecast error is this thing. And then when you do the uh, uh, the mean square error, you're just, uh, you're just uh, taking the average of the square forecast column. Um, and one other pointer, um, when I was computing the forecast, you may forget, um, so I copied these in from part one because I'd already done that. Uh, you also need to update the T values when we're forecasting for the next year to 13, 14, 15, and 16. So that's it. That's how we get all the values for the, uh, for the MSE, for the multiple regression. And uh, when we go back to Cengage, that's it. So we've got these, we've got the values, we've got the forecast that all match up. And then the MSE for the Model D is, is much better. So the model developed in D is the one that wins in this case. So that's it. Uh, everything basically works the same um, as the previous ones, just a little more advanced because we're doing a multiple regression rather than a singular regression. Um, I would have tried to fit this into one video, but I'm capped at 15 minutes, so I hope that helps.